So now let's prove that our language 0 to the n, 1 to the n is not regular. And in fact, what we're going to prove is that a to the n, b to the n is not regular. Because in the Turing library, what we have defined is you can find in a submodule example that is defined inside lang the following language, right? So the language is defined as there exists some natural number such that the word given as input belongs to the language a to the n followed by b to the n. And as you know, a to the n followed by b to the n, these are language operators, right? This is the concatenation of two formal languages and the hat hats double hat sign corresponds to the power operator of languages. And this, as you know, is the difference between using the language POW, which was inductively defined as follows, and the function POW, which was defined uh, over strings and way easier to understand. Similarly, the difference between the language app and the function app, right? Where the latter is what we use, for instance, here. So in our Turing library, we actually define a very general definition of the language, which uses the operators, the power and concatenation operators. But in fact, when we're doing the proofs, what we would really like is to have a simpler uh, definition of the language. And that we also define in lang. Let me actually prefix this with lang. So if we look at prefix at lang, okay, turing.lang, we see that that is exactly the same. Here it is we see that L4 is exactly the same as writing a language much simpler, much more simply, which uses the POW1 function, right? So we can write the language as being any word that is, in, that is equal, word x, that is equal to calling the function POW1 of, of a to the n plus plus POW1 b to the n. Okay, so we're gonna use that. And when we do rewrite, Let me go back to language just to show you. If you scroll down here, scroll all the way down, we have the proof right here. We show that the language defined as this is exactly the same as defining it directly without using language combinators. So the first thing we do is we rewrite L4 to just use the simpler notation that uses POW1. Okay, so now, because we are, let me go back now, how do we prove that a language L4 is not regular? Well, we use the theorem not regular, which we just talked about. And when we apply that, what we need to show is that the language for any P, for any length, pumping length, L4 is clogged. And what we do first is rewrite L4 to be a simpler language simpler to reason about. Okay, so we need to prove that the thing on the bottom is, re is clocked. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we have to use the clogged, the constructor of clogged, which is this inductive definition. And it says that we need to pick a word W that is in L, whose length is at least P, and that is also in the clogged subset of L. Okay, so how do we do that? We, as you remember, we're going to pick w to not be any w, but it be a specific w, which is 0 to the p, 1 to the p. So how do we do that? Well, we just write apply clock def with w equals the following expression. So this corresponds to a to the p and b to the p. OK, so that's the first line. OK, once we apply that, we have to prove one, two, three things, right? Because the way we define clog we have to pick a word that is in L, show that the length is, a, is P, and finally, where P is unknown because it's given, right? We don't know what P is. And finally, we have to show that the language is clogged. Okay. 
So first thing we do, we're going to prove the two easy cases, and then the last case is the hard one that we're going to take the rest of the proof. So the first one is just showing that this language is in fact there. Well, that's very easy. As we know, if we first just unfold in, we just need to show that there exists an end such that these two things are the same. And as we know, we can get rid of this existential by giving the evidence, which we know is just P. So that's pretty simple. Now what do we do? We have the same string on the left and right, and we conclude it with reflexivity. Okay, so now we have this result to prove, where we have the length of pa1 with p plus plus, and here we have a string. And if you search for um, search for lengths of concatenation, you will see that there's a very common uh, theorem that you always want to use, which says if you're doing the length of concatenation is the same as adding the two substrings together, the length of each substring together. So that's what we rewrite, and we have length of A of P plus length of B of P. And as we know, we can also search now the length of power of 1. We know that it's going to be P. So what theorem uses that, uh, proves that? Well, we can search for length of power of 1. And it takes two parameters, so I'm going to do two underscore. And now we see that we can use power of 1 length. And if we write it, we replace by the exponent. So now we have p. p plus something is always greater or equal than p. So we can use omega, which is a tactic that resolves arithmetic expressions. So here, this is so easy that we can let we can ask Koch to prove that for us. And indeed, that's what we do with this omega query, and it concludes this branch. So now we're finally in the thing that is interesting, which is to show that a of p plus plus b of p clogs the language. So first, let's unfold in so that we can get a clearer view of what's going on here. And now what we see is that we have clogs. So let's just unfold clogs so that it becomes a bit more obvious. OK, so now what do we have here? We're saying that for any x, y, z, so for any division x, y, z in our input string, we have to conclude, we have to find an i that clogs the language. OK, so first let's introduce, get rid of this for all. And now we reach we've taken care of these two items, and now we have to prove the third, this item right here. So we want to prove that W belongs to clogs. Okay, for that we need to pick which I satisfy that condition, and we know that by picking two, by picking two we can conclude that. Okay, so now let's pick number two. So by picking number two, note what happened. We have X, two y's, and then z. That's exactly what we wrote here. We pick i equals to 2. Okay, so that's exactly what we're doing, the exactly the same thing here we're doing here. Okay, so we're going to pick that, and now we need to show that x, y, y, z does not belong on our language, L4. So first, let's just unfold in to simplify our, our assumption. Now we have to show that there's there not exist. So we have an, a negation here. Basically, we do this proof as usual by contradiction. So we assume that there exists, and then we reach a contradiction. So whenever we have a negation there, we introduce the negation n. Now we assume that we have such a situation where the left hand side equals the right hand side and then we're going to basically get rid of this existential here get rid of that and now we have this situation so look at our n so our n is saying that we have a to the power of n b to the power of n is the same as x y two y's and then z Okay, and now we're going to show that, as we know, there are more 
more a's because we duplicated y and y only contains a's what we're going to end up having is more a's than b's so this equation is going to be impossible to satisfy so first thing we do is let's just get rid of this pow so that we just see the two y's there rather than having a pi so we simplify this equation basically we want to evaluate this sub expression and we do so with simple now we have this plus plus equals which we know that by simplifying it doesn't go away that's why it's here we just simplified it so the way to get rid of it is by rewriting and again if you search for something that has plus at the end you will see that you can use either of these theorems so we can rewrite that or we can rewrite this so actually let's do it there okay and we rewrite it and it goes away so now we have x y y and z which is great so now we want to show that this condition n can never be satisfied so we're going to reach a contradiction here okay so now we're going to use this theorem and what does this theorem says let's look at it so whenever we have this is something i proved on the side and we can go into more detail about this lemma but for now let's just use it without thinking about how to prove it so what does it say it says that if you have power of a and power of b to be equal to x y z that means we can rewrite we can create obtain these two conditions right which is exactly what we wrote here in this situation in this slide sorry where we want to say that a a plus b equals b and then we're going to replace a by the length of x y so let's look here we're saying that there exists some n and that corresponds to the length of x y Right, the length of x, y, sorry, uh, this n here is b. It's this b right here. So what we want to do is basically this step. We want to rewrite our string so that we separate what is x, y and what is z. Right? We want to get these two together that only have a's. So let's see how that goes. We show that the length of x, concatenated with y plus n equals p right here we have that a plus b equals b p and that x y the length of them equals a right so here that corresponds to this bit this is a and b is this n so that's going to be the left hand side which is just explaining what p is how we can divide we can divide p as p is the the, the length of x y plus something okay and then we can rewrite x y z right x y z this one above as just rearranging the the powers right so it's going to be exactly this expression that we have here right so once we apply this theorem we're going to apply it in h0 so we're going to apply it here and what we see now is we have this whole goal and now let's simplify it and that's what we're doing here in this step so we're going to remove this existential and then we're going to break it down into two things and actually we're going to discard the left hand side because you don't need it anymore that's why you have the underscore there okay so we're going to do that and now we have just rewritten so i have exactly this situ this this um string right here and we're saying that this string equals to xyz so xyz equals power of a and then all of this and then power of b all of that okay great next what we do well, let's see what we're, we're using this, this theorem that is saying if you have the power of a plus something, right? And in the left hand side, you have x and you have x here. That means I can rewrite my string as x to be equal to the power of a to do x. 
followed by y. So why is that? Let's look. Basically what I'm doing now is I want to put in evidence this x part, right? this length of x, so that it matches x, so that I know what x is. Basically I'm saying x is going to be this amount of a's, and then I, I will be able to get how many how many a's are in y, and finally I can divide z. So I want to break down x from y from z into three e equations. And I do this. First, I, I put in evidence x in this first step. See? x is in evidence. And now I got yz. And now I simplify this whole expression in this step. Okay, now I have two more. Now I just rearrange the order so that I can reapply it again. And I do the same thing to break down the y. I want to put in evidence y. So I do that with this same theorem. And now I get x, y, and z. So now I destruct that again. I get one expression for x. So I know that there are x, a's. And then I have y, a's. And then z has a bit of a's and then a bit of b. Exactly what we wanted, right? Basically this re rearrangement of strings. What do we do now? We're going to rewrite these three components here. So let's do that. Now we rewrite all of them. What do we get? We're basically going to get this string, right? We want to get to this string that has two y's. So we broke it down and then we rewrote each component in the thing that we're trying to prove. Okay, so next, one thing that is very annoying is whenever you have lots of applies, as you know, the, the basically the parentheses, if they're not showing up, that means you have parentheses around this sub-expression and then another parenthesis around this sub-expression. What I would like to have is a on the left-hand side and then some expression. But actually this power of a is nested underneath this application. So the first thing we should always do is just rewrite APASOC. So APASOC is dissociativity, saying that we can rearrange um, such that we Put on the left hand side, we make everything uniform, and now we have B and B. Okay, B here, and then we have all of this which represents A. So that's the first thing we do. Second, second thing we do, so now we're just massaging this string so that it becomes simpler. Next thing we want to do is notice that there's a lot of powers of 1 with the same base. Because they have the same base, we can add all of these powers together. So that's what we do with power of 1 plus. It's saying that if you have power of 1 of x0 and y0, you can rewrite that by x0 plus y0. So exactly what you're... So I'm doing repeat because I want to rewrite multiple times. There's multiple situations where that happens, multiple occurrences, so I'm going to rewrite that multiple times. Okay, so now you got a way nicer thing, right? So now I have a to the power of n and b to the power of n. And here I have A and B. Great. So now, intuitively, what do we know? Well, we know that N must be this. And N must be this. Right? Because that's usually what you have. If you have the same base, and you have A, B, C, D as powers, you know that A equals C and B equals D. That can only be true if the bases are different. So we, first, let's just prove that the bases are different. That's what we're doing here. Okay, so A is different than B. And now we can use this theorem that is doing exactly what we were talking about before. So if we have this equation, we can s separate just the powers. Just focus on the powers, right? Which is this final step right here. Although we, the way we proved it was with the negation, not equal. So now, by applying this theorem, we can break this down into two equalities, right? Where n equals the first, and the other n, which is the same n, equals to the right-hand side. Great. 
So now let's break this n into two parts, left and right. So now we have left and right. And now let's rewrite all of these equations everywhere. We do that. And now what we see? Well, one thing we see is that we have x to the left and x to the left. Okay, when we have something, n to plus something, and n, n plus something, we can remove the n on the left-hand side. First, we need to do that trick with the associativity so that we make everything in evidence. So now we have left on the same. And now we simplify. We remove this n, and then what we're going to get is... Now what we see is that we have y and y. So we can do the same thing again. Apply in R. Okay, so now what we have? Well, we have that y plus b equals b. So the only way for this to happen is if the length of y is 0. Right? And that's exactly what this theorem is saying. So if x plus y equals y, then x equals 0. Okay, so let's apply that theorem in R. So now we know that the length of y is 0. But we do know that y must be not um, nil. So if it's not nil, the length cannot be 0. So the only way we know that we can conclude this is by doing a case analysis on y. So let's do a case analysis on y. Okay, so in this situation, in the first case, sorry, in the first case we have that y is, is nil, and if that's the case, then we have that nil is different than nil, which is a contradiction. Otherwise, notice what happens in R, where is R? R. We have that the length of cons equals zero, and that, as we know, is, uh, we use the exposing principle to rule that out. And we finally conclude our assumption and prove that L4 is not regular.